All right, just want to kind of get things rolling. We're going to, I'm going to cover a, a variation of dosage forms that are used in bioidentical hormone replacement therapy. Primarily, I'm just going to focus on the compounded uh, variety, which is what we uh, tend to use most often with the, uh, in this particular field. This, I'm going to start right out with this. This is a, a slide that compares a 100 milligram dose of uh, oral progesterone to a vaginal uh, dose of 100 milligrams progesterone. You can see very clearly in the plasma that the oral levels barely make it up and then the vaginal levels continue to climb, and the, the oral levels are, are declining by, you know, four hours to six hours. It's dropped off almost back down to baseline, whereas the vaginal uh, levels at six hours have still not even peaked. And then the peak from the vaginal application continues on out, you know, 26, 28 hours before it really drops below uh, a therapeutic uh, level. So the moral of the story here is that the vaginal is a percutaneous absorption, and you're, gonna, you're traveling through a, a, a cellular membrane, and you're going to have much better effect from a, a vaginal application than you are from an oral application. The levels are going to be far more substantial for a longer period of time. Vaginal application is going to have offer good absorption characteristics. There's good documentation on the effectiveness of progesterone, especially for luteal phase defect. And also there's good documentation with the commercial products that have been manufactured for estrogen vaginal uptake. So um, it, it's, it, you can use it both as a uh, systemic absorption characteristic or you can use it for local effect within the vagina, whichever you're going for. Typical dosage forms are going to be suppositories or creams. I think most of our patients, we end up using the vaginal cream products on this when we're compounding bioidenticals. But it can also use um, trochies, vaginal trochies as well. Oral dosage forms, when you absorb hormones orally, it really, the particle size makes a huge difference in terms of the percentage of absorption and the absorption characteristics. Micronized particles are going to be absorbed orally far, far greater than the non-micronized particles. And when you absorb something orally, you're, you're passing it through the gastrointestinal tract, so you're going to see a lot of metabolites being produced, which is not going to happen if you're applying this transdermally or through the skin. Different types of oral dosage forms. You've got immediate release capsules, which will be 90 to 95% gastrically metabolized uh, before it even reaches the hepatal portal loop. You're going to have further metabolism by the liver. Uh, you're going to get a peak, a rapid peak. You're going to get a very short duration of action. So really, in my opinion, oral uh, immediate release products are not a good choice. You want to go for something other than an immediate release. Sustained release capsules, on the other hand, offer a better picture. You're going to have a longer uh, response. You have fewer failures. You have less peak and valley involved because you're going to get a more sustained absorption, absorption picture because of the delay in the delivery. Oil-filled capsules, you're taking these by mouth, but it's not your traditional gastric absorption process. This is actually a lymphatic absorption process. Um, it's a prompt release product. You're going to see, you know, a need because of that for more uh, frequent dosage. Uh, it's time consuming from a compounder's perspective. If you're making these things, they take a lot more time to make than a cap regular capsule does. Um, and if you look at the, the manufactured products, and since this is a non-CME lecture, I can go ahead and say Prometrium from the podium. Uh, Prometrium is packed with in, uh, or packaged in, in peanut oil. So you, if you have patients that are allergic to peanut oil, then this is not, that's not going to be a good choice for your patient. And only about 10% of that Prometrium capsule is bioavailable. So you want to keep that in mind. If you're giving a 100 milligram dose and your patient's most likely receiving 10 milligrams of that 100 milligram dosage. So you, you probably need to think in terms of much larger dosages just to get a more uh, physiologic amount of progesterone on board. Sublingual and buccal absorption. Um, most often we're using trochies to deliver this. The advantages of this, you're going to avoid in large measure the upper uh, gastrointestinal um, metabolism of these, so you're also going to avoid a lot of the first pass metabolism effect that you see with oral dosage forms. There's a good study, uh, an Australian study by Ren et al., where they looked at, uh, they were using trochies that had estradiol, progesterone, testosterone, and DHEA in the uh, same trochies in postmenopausal women. And the conclusion of this was that the transbuccal absorption was a very decent approach to, or novel approach to using uh, the hormones. It got it through the skin, it got it into the systemic uh, uh, blood flow, and it was an advantage over some of the erratic absorption characteristics you see with other dosage forms. The results in this were kind of interesting. If, you, if they, they broke it down by hormone, if you look at the estradiol in the trochies, and the testosterone, if you look at the first dose application, the, the area under the curve for first dose application versus steady state, both of those curves were almost superimposable, especially in the testosterone, it was almost identical. Yet when you looked at, the, when you looked at DHEA, you saw a, a marked increase uh, from the uh, steady state versus the initial dosage. 
And if you looked at uh, the progesterone levels from this, it was actually a biphasic peak. You saw two separate peaks. You're getting some intrahepatic recycling. And also, you're probably, because you're using a trochee, that some of the saliva is going to carry hormone into the gastrointestinal tract, so you're going to get some oral absorption of the progesterone from the trochee as well. So you're going to see a little more of a, a different picture. And, this, and the biphasic uh, peaks occur both in the initial dose as well as the steady state dosing. Some of the disadvantages of a sublingual or buccal uh, trochee is going to be that uh, you, know, you, you may not get true absorption because of that biphasic peak. Um, you may have to dose it more often. Some patients are not going to be able to uh, get by with just a single once a day or even a twice a day application. Whenever you're taking something by mouth, it's subjective, so you always have to look at the flavoring of the product. Not everybody's going to like one flavor. So from a compounder's perspective, we may end up having to make multiple uh, flavorings of this, and then some people just don't like to have to suck on a lozenge, so the convenience of this may or may not appeal to your patient. We can also uh, look at sublingual drops, uh, fixed oil suspensions most often. Uh, the concentrations of the fixed oil suspensions have to be fairly high because the volume of what's absorbed sublingually is not a real large volume. And because it is a liquid, it's not going to stay in the sublingual area very long. So um, the, the flavoring is, would also be an issue for the sublingual drops. Tablet triturates, the immediate release tablet triturates that dissolve in the mouth rapidly, you're looking at some characteristics of both sublingual absorption as well as some characteristics of oral absorption being involved with the sublingual triturate. But most of it is going to be of the oral nature. So the vast majority of what you're going to receive from the, pa for the patient's perspective almost resembles that of an immediate release capsule that's going to go orally. You're going to have a rapid peak, you're going to have rapid, uh, a rapid uptake, and you're also going to have a very rapid trough. So you're going to have to dose this far more often. So this, like the prompt release capsules, is probably my least favorite way to dose the hormones. I want to talk about topical administration of bioidenticals. Um, Steroids are highly lipophilic. They go through the skin real easy. So all you have to do is just use an ordinary cream base, a passive cream base, and you will get decent absorption of these hormones through the skin. You don't necessarily have to use something that's going to drive the hormones through the skin. If you look at the permeability of hormones, um, this is the, as the list goes down, you're, in, you're increasing in, in the absorption or the permeability of these hormones. So estrone is going to be absorbed better than progesterone and pregnenolone and all the way down the list. Actually, DHEA, which is not on this list, shows up somewhere between progesterone and estrone. So DHEA would win the battle in terms of what's going to be absorbed more, more uh, in larger quantity over the progesterone. So that's why we've seen in patients that we're looking at, sometimes it's best to separate the DHEA from the progesterone uh, prep in order to make sure that we're, we're uh, allowing the progesterone to be absorbed properly. 